Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. Right now it's early March, which means that the winter has gone away, the spring will soon be here, and as usual at this time of year, the Raspberry Pi Foundation has launched some new hardware. No, we don't yet have a Raspberry Pi 4, but what we do have is this, which is the Raspberry Pi Zero W, or Raspberry Pi Zero Wireless. And I happen to think this is a very significant release. And so in this video, I'm going to take a look at the Raspberry Pi Zero W, but I'm also going to provide an update on some other single board computing things, videos upcoming on this channel. And I'm also in particular going to tell you about what's going on with the ASUS Tinkerboard. So, here we have the Pi Zero W in the uh, anti-static bag in which it's supplied. And if we just uh, get the thing out, back to opening these bags in, come out, here out, there we are. Get the thing out there. As you can see, at first glance, it's uh, not that surprising. This said, as the name implies, we do have a significant addition of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which is supplied by a BCM43438 radio chip, or in other words, this tiny, shiny little rectangle, which is connected to this triangular cavity antenna. The BCM43438 is actually the same wireless chip used on a Raspberry Pi 3, and so we can have great confidence that things will work okay. Other than Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, the spec of the Pi Zero W remains the same as the previous Pi Zero models, which means that we have 512 megabytes of DDR2 RAM, and then hiding under the RAM in a stacked fashion is a BCM2835 system on a chip with an ARM 11 76JZFS CPU clocked it up to 1 GHz and a Video Core 4 GPU. We then have a micro SD card slot, a mini HDMI socket, a micro USB socket to power the board, and another OTG micro USB socket for connecting peripherals. We also have 40 GPIO pads to which we can connect a GPIO header, such as this one. We could put that in here, something like that. That would need soldering in, and that would give us access to use all of those GPIO pins. We've also got four other solder pads to which you can connect a reset switch and composite video. Finally, on the end of the board, we have a camera connector, which we didn't have on the Raspberry Pi Zero 1.1 or 1.2, but which was introduced on the Raspberry Pi Zero 1.3. And this can be connected to the Pi Zero's own very tiny camera, or to a standard Raspberry Pi camera using this type of interface cable, which has the standard camera connector, size connector on the end, and the smaller one, which will fit in the Pi Zero on the other end. And if you're thinking, Chris, you've got a, a camera connector. Why is that? Have you got a camera for the Raspberry Pi? Yes, I've just got a camera when I got the Raspberry Pi Zero W, and I will indeed be taking the camera and the lead and the Pi Zero W and using them to upgrade my Pi Zero Zumo robot in a future video. To make that happen, I've also purchased the latest PiBo case for the Pi Zero W from Pi Moroni, which is always great because it comes wrapped like a fantastic little present. It's always fun to, to rip it open and otherwise take it apart. And uh, mounting the Pi Zero in this case will allow me to secure it on the Zumo robot with access to the camera connector and, of course, will no longer need the Wi Fi dongle. The Pi Zero W is priced at $10 or £10, which makes it about twice the price of the previous Pi Zero models. However, I actually think it's a very good price, and for two reasons. Firstly, for the extra $5 or £5, you get a computer which can be controlled via Bluetooth keyboard or over Wi-Fi via SSH without having to add any form of USB dongle or hub. And so for £10 or $10, you're actually buying a far more complete computer. Secondly, priced at $10 or £10, the Pi Zero W will deliver a higher margin to both the Raspberry Pi Foundation and Pi retailers. And in turn, this should enable them to actually keep the Pi Zero W in stock. Now, as we all know, the only real problem with the first Pi Zero models was that availability was terrible. And this must have been due to a large part to the fact that the Raspberry Pi Foundation set such a low price. Now, in theory, the Pi Zero 1.3 without wireless will remain available for about $5 or £5, with the Pi Zero W selling for about £10 or $10. 
But in practice, I very strongly suspect it will be the Pi Zero W that will actually be available to purchase from most retailers, and that's simply because it's been given an economically credible price tag. So, I thought it would be nice to introduce the Raspberry Pi Zero W to some other single board computers. And so, for example, here I'm comparing it to a Raspberry Pi Zero 1.2. And as you can see, not that different, but we can see straight off we've got the wireless chip and the camera connector on the Pi Zero W. And uh, after that, not a lot of difference. They had some space for a Raspberry on the top here, but not on this one. But under both these boards, we've got a Raspberry underneath, so that's absolutely okay, isn't it? More significantly, let's compare the Pi Zero to some other boards. For example, let's compare it here with the Raspberry Pi 3. And as this makes very clear, the Raspberry Pi Zero W, in line with previous Raspberry Pi Zeros, really is a very small board compared to a standard size Pi, and yet it's got more power than the original Raspberry Pi on this tiny board. And as I also mentioned earlier, it's got the same wireless chip, you can see it there on the Raspberry Pi Zero W, we'd have to look on the back of the Pi, and you'd find the, the radio chip is, is just there. And I think now the Raspberry Pi Foundation with these two boards, the Pi 3, the Pi Zero W has got the best lineup it's ever had. Both of these, I think, are classic boards. Both of these boards, I think, will be around for some time. However, the final board I want to compare the Raspberry Pi Zero W to is the chip. So let's put the Raspberry Pi Zero W down next to the chip. The chip, as you may recall, is a $9 single board computer from the next big thing co. And I did a head-to-head -head video comparing the chip to a previous Raspberry Pi Zero model without the wireless not that long ago, and they came out pretty even. But I think now the Raspberry Pi Zero has got the edge. Yes, it's about the same price as the chip, now we're almost exactly the same price, $9, $10. Vendors will have little differences, but that's basically the same price machines. But we've now got machines where both have got onboard Wi-Fi, onboard Bluetooth. The difference is really is that on the chip, you've got onboard flash memory, four gigabytes on the chip, whereas you have to add your SD card to your Raspberry Pi Zero W, but on the Raspberry Pi Zero W, you've got your mini HDMI socket. I think that's a very, very handy thing to have. So both fantastic little boards, but for me, the edge now very clearly sits with the Raspberry Pi Zero W. Right, as I am here and talking about single board computers, I thought I'd give you an update on the ASUS Tinkerboard which is a new single board computer that I featured in a video on my channel three or four weeks back now, I think it was. Very popular video, lots of people like the idea of a Tinkerboard, they want to get hold of one, and they keep asking me, how do we get hold of a Tinkerboard? And they've read things like the article on Hackaday, which has said, oh, maybe it was released too early, or maybe it isn't available yet. There's even been rumours in some quarters the Tinkerboard you know, will never be released. None of that, I, I think, is true. So I thought I'd make it clear where we are. For a start, since I put my Tinkerboard video up, ASUS have launched a new Tinkerboard website, and you can see it here, nice site, lots of support stuff there. Although there is a comment on, on the site if we scroll down that says a HD and UHD video playback at 30 frames a second is currently only possible via the Rocktrip video player, which is limited to support under Tinker OS and that therefore third-party video players and applications may not offer hardware acceleration. In other words, it might not work properly in terms of video playback. And I think that certainly remains the case at the moment. There isn't proper support for video playback, so things like Kodi aren't currently possible, at least they don't work well on the Tinkerboard. We've seen a version of Kodi released, and then it's been removed again by ASUS, so clearly there are issues going on there. Also, since I last talked about Tinkerboard as a site being launched, a forum, Tinkerboarding is now up, so you can go and have a look at that if you want to learn about the board. But again, there's not that much information there right now. And so what I thought what I would do is to actually contact ASUS themselves to find out what's going on. I've had all sorts of email replies from three different people in ASUS who have come, come back to me. I first of all contacted the support link on the ASUS Tinkerboard page website. It's in a good place to start. That got me through to someone who said, no, you've come through to the wrong person, I'm in technical support, I can't help you. But they gave me contact details for sales and marketing in what they call the Open Platform Business Group at ASUS. So I thought I'd tell you what they've told me. Now, in terms of the sales department in the UK, this was their statement. They said that uh, the Tinkerboard is currently available via Curry's PC World and can be found both in stores and online. And the link for that, of course, I'll put in the video description. And yes, as you can see, it is available. 
And they also went on to say, our intention is to launch with more retailers on this board next quarter, as well as to grow the community and forums around the product. So in other words, we should expect to see the Tinkerboard more widely available into the April, May, June 2017. And as they concluded their statement, we have been excited by the positive response we've received so far for the Tinkerboard and will continue to build our support for the product. So there's no reason to believe it's not going to be, continue to be available and going to be, be fully released. I also had a statement from uh, ASUS's marketing people again at the uh, Open Platform Business Group. And they said this, they said, uh, we had an issue with a launch where distribution actually received the product before we'd officially launched it. The product isn't really ready in regards to the software and community. I'm assuming it will come into stock again soon, as it wasn't meant to be stocked to distribution. So clearly, there has been some sort of issue about the ASUS Tinkerboard availability and release, but I get a strong feeling it is going to be sorted out. We'll be all playing with the Tinkerboard fairly soon. So there we are. We've got the Raspberry Pi Zero W now released on the market, and I'm sure it'll be a great success. And we've got the ASUS Tinkerboard, which is not really quite on the market. You can get it in the UK, but hopefully availability will improve, as ASUS have indicated. And they're going to sort out the software. And once we've got good software availability for the Tinkerboard, particularly things like Kodi are available, I'll be doing some more Tinkerboard videos on this channel. Perhaps before then, I've got some other single board computer stuff in the pipeline. Don't worry, I'll be doing other things on the channel than single board computers in the next few months, but I have got some other single board computer stuff coming up. Not least, I've got stuff on the uh, Latte Panda. I've made some videos on this in the past, which have been extremely popular. This is a Windows single board computer, an x86 single board computer. And I'm gonna be making a video fairly soon when I use this thing for a week as my only computer, my Latte Panda Week video. And also, several people have been saying to me, Chris, you must try out one of the Orange Pi PCs. And so here I've got one of the uh, Orange Pi PCs, and I'll be unboxing this and making a video about this in a future video as well. So there'll be lots of single board computer stuff in addition to the Pi and the Tinkerboard coming up on Explaining Computers. But now that's it for this time. Please do all that like and subscribe stuff. It really helps the channel. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.